Welcome back to this tutorial on developing ReverseEye as a web application. We're in the middle of a long sequence of tutorials, and in this sequence of lectures, we're going to start changing the way in which we think about our client server architecture. Up till now, we've been developing the technical infrastructure for playing our game. We basically have a board where you can put tokens on the board, and that information is shared among two players that are competing in the game of Othello. But what we're going to do, starting with this lecture, is we're going to start adding what we'll call business logic to this game. That's going to enforce the rules of the game on top of the technical rules that are in place by the computer in the network. So in this lecture, what we're going to capture, what we're going to tackle is turn checking, making sure that people are playing in turn. My name is Professor Don Patterson. Thanks for joining me. All right, the steps that we're going to do in this video are threefold. First, we're going to tackle some housekeeping of our game so that it looks a little bit cleaner and a little sharper. Then we're going to update our client so that the client is reporting to the player what the state of the game is, whose turn it is. And then we're going to update the server so that the actual gameplay is being enforced. All right, let's start with some housekeeping. Let's shift over to Visual Studio Code. And let's uh, do a couple things. And let's do things with some of the presentation. So for starters, the first thing that I would like to change is I would like to change the way our game starts up. So let me see if I can show you the error that I want to tackle here. So I'm going to run a uh, version of our server. Um, and actually, let me make sure it's highlighted. Select server, and then let me run that. And then let me open a new window, a pair of windows, actually. Okay, here's two clients playing our game right now. We'll have two participants join, and I'll show you what the problem is that I want to address. Enter a lobby, one invites the other to play. Game starts, that initial red, I want that to go away. And I also want this message that says game over at the top to go away, because the game's not actually over. So let's tackle those two things. Over to Visual Studio Code. Uh, the first place we want to look is we want to look in game.html. Game.html is where we have uh, our layout for our board. So if we come here, we see that all of those red squares there, in my case, you're going to see something different, but in whatever it is, it's going to be the error square that you came up with. That's probably not a good way to start our game. So what I want to do is I want to change all the instances of error.gif in every row of our initial board. I want to change it to empty.gif. And I'm going to do that with a keystroke here. Uh, you, you'll have to do it with whatever you have available to you. Uh, this is because I've got a plugin that's doing something called Vim. All right, so I just changed all those errors to empty. And that looks pretty good. And then the other thing I want to do is I want it to start off at the top of the board here. I don't want it to start saying game over. I still need this area, this this H3 tag that has an ID of game over so that when the game is over, we can announce it. But we don't have to put any content in it right now. So we're just going to delete the content but leave the tags there. Um, and that'll get rid of that initial game over message. And that'll fix that problem. That's the first one I want to tackle. First two things I'd like to tackle. The next thing I want to tackle is this game board color. I'd like the background color to be just, you know, a little bit darker to offset it from the background of the page. So let's let's do that. And, and of course, you're welcome to style this however you'd like. Um, this is just, what I do is just, uh, you know, my best effort at doing something that looks aesthetically nice. But a lot of you are much more talented designers. And as long as you have the same functionality, free, feel free to use different graphics or different layouts, whatever whatever you want to do, as long as it's implementing the same technology, communications and play and all that stuff. All right, so the game styling, the game styling that I want to change is just to add a color to the game board elements. We already have a selector here. All the elements that are table tags that also have the idea of game board any of the descendants of that tag, which are of TD, which are each of the cells within our game board. I want to make the background color to be something just a little bit darker. Um, by default, I get green there, but I kind of want something not quite as dark. So maybe something, I don't know, something in there. Let's save that and let's reload the game board and see if it looks okay. Now it's going to mess up the play, but I'll just be able to see what color it is. Oops, I'm having a little trouble there. Let's try the other one. That's that's good. I like that. All right, so let's take it back to the entrance page. 
and get it ready to go. Okay, so that's our housekeeping. Uh, that cleans up our game board a little bit. Now let's update our client with this new status info that we want to include um, in the game. And so the client is in main.js. And so we're going to go to main.js, close out the HTML and the CSS files, open main.js. And what I want to do is I want to um, go to the area where we are um, updating our board. So in game update, which is, which is the message that's sent to our board uh, whenever there's a change in the game, we receive the information and make sure that the payload is okay, that there's no failed result. We pull out the game board from the um, identify from the information that's coming from the server, um, and then we update our color. If we don't have a color, we assign ourselves a color, and then we do this bit here. And this is where I want to make our first change. We write what our color is. So I want to edit this, and I want to make an if statement here that allows us allows you actually to change the, your presentation. So on the back end and in all the code, we're going to say that the colors are white and white and black. But I know some of you have different kinds of um, tokens that maybe white and black isn't the right thing. Maybe it's sun and moon, something like that. And you want to say it's sun's turn or it's moon's turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to translate this. And we're going to say if my color, the variable, is white, then what we're going to display to the user is the equivalent of white. Um, and for me, it is going to be white, but you could make it sun or moon or whatever your white is. And that way you can leave what's going on in the code is still being white and black, but the presentation uh, is whatever it is you'd like it to be. So I am white. I'm going to change this out. I'm going to get rid of the variable name here. So we're not directly writing the variable name. We're just writing I am white. Make sure that looks OK. Good. And then if you are not white, if instead you are black, you will write I am black. And if there's something else, it's an error. And so we're just going to write out instead error. I don't, I don't put a little backslash apostrophe there know what color I am. All right, so we shouldn't see that, but what that's going to that's the place at which you can change the way in which you present to the user what color they are. Now what we want to do is we want to um, add on to this kind of structure the ability to identify whose turn it is to the user. So I'm going to take these if statements and I'm going to copy them. And I'm going to put them down below and instead of checking whether my color is white or black, I'm going to change this so it's payload.game.whose turn. So if it's white's turn, or down here, if it's black's turn, then we're going to add something to that HTML. So I'm going to change this HTML because we're not going to replace it now. We're just going to append onto the HTML that's already there, which is what we wrote above. I am white or I am black. We're going to append uh, an H4 tag, and we'll get rid of the ID here. And what we're going to append is something like it is white's turn. And again, you can say it's sun's turn or moon's turn or whatever whatever graphics you're using if you'd like. And down here we'll say h4 it is black's turn. Oh, I didn't write turn up above. Let me do that. Make sure we close with the same tag we opened with. Oh, wow, typo, bat fingers, all right. All right, and then down here, if we don't know what whose turn it is, we'll write error, don't know whose turn it is. And then go back and put a slash in front of that apostrophe. There we go. All right, and that's all we need to do on the server side um, in order to update this information on the screen. Um, if we do if we do play something um, and we get an update back and there's some kind of error, I would like to be able to see what that error is. And right now the code in the stock version doesn't have that. So what I want to go down to is I want to go down to the play token response. So after our client has played a token and if we get a response back and there's some sort of failure here, I, I just want to alert to that. So I'm going to say alert payload.message, and that'll just pop up a message in the browser indicating what the failure is. All right, that looks good. That's going to update our client with the new status info. Now what we need to do is we need to go to our server, and we need to change the settings that ver verify that the turn checking is happening. Now the two things that have to happen for the server to check turns is, first of all, it has to make sure that if white is playing, it is white's turn. And the other thing that it has to check for is that the player who's playing on white's behalf 
is the player that we expect to be playing on White's behalf. So we don't get anyone spoofing our player's turn. So we'll go to Visual Studio for that. And this is a client side, this is server side. So we'll do server.js. And the place where we want to go for this is on the play token command. So when we get a play token command from our client, meaning that they've dropped the token onto the board, we look to see what the payload looks like that were sent from the client. We check to make sure that there is a payload. We check to make sure that we know the player that's associated with the socket, and we grab that. We check to see that there's a username associated with that player and store it. We check to see the game that's associated, uh, the room that they're playing in or which, which board they're playing on, which board session. We check to make sure they played on a row and on a column, which is sort of what you'd expect from a play. We check to see what color they're playing, and then we pull out the game board itself that's playing. And before we say, send back this message that this play was a success, we want to do our error checking here. So the first error checking that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the uh, turn the, that the player played in turn. So I'll put a little comment here that says, um, uh, make sure the current attempt is by the correct color. All right, so that's what we're checking here. And we're going to have an if statement. And we're going to say, if the color that's coming in on the payload is not double equals to game dot whose turn it is. So if it's, if it's, if the color's being played is not the, play it's not the color that we expect we are going to make a failure message here we're going to let response equal and we're going to do it this different way up up here is a similar fail message but we're just going to write it up the way i prefer but didn't do it earlier this way make a similar kind of data structure we'll say result colon is fail comma at the end and single quotes and our message is that uh play token played the wrong color uh, it's it's not their turn all right we have to escape that single quote in the middle and we don't need a comma at the end all right so that that'll be the message that we're going to send back and then we'll go ahead and send it back with socket emit and single quote play underscore token underscore response single quote and then send back the response that we're that we just created for them all right and then we're going to grab this these two lines up here because the play token command failed and we're going to return that all right so that's the first one check to make sure that the player played in the right order let me look at that for a second and just make sure everything looks okay all right, I don't see any errors offhand there. So now we're going to do another check, and we're just going to copy this code, and this is going to be the socket check to make sure the socket's the right thing. So this is going to make sure that the current play is coming from the expected player. That's a comment, and our current if statement is going to be changed, so we're going to make some space here. This is going to be a compound check. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check whether the game dot whose underscore turn, if that's triple equal to white. All right. So first of all, we're checking uh, if it's what these. This is what the error is. If it is white's turn, and the game dot player underscore white dot socket is not single equal to socket.id. So if it's white's turn, but the player playing for white isn't who we expected, or I'm going to copy this line and put it down below, or if it's black's turn and it game.player black socket is not who we expect it to be, then we're going to have the error. All right, so we can do like that if you want. You can see it. And the error is going to be, it's a failure. And the um, play token played um, the right color, but by the wrong person, by the wrong socket, by the wrong, we'll say player. All right, and then we'll send that play token message out. It's a failure. The command failed. Save that. Make sure everything looks OK. All right, and if we're able to get through these two lines, then the play was by the person we expected to, and it was the correct color. And that's all we need. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my server. Let's go ahead and uh, stop the existing server. We've got server.js up here. Let's run a fresh copy of our server because we just changed the server code. And I want to see the console to make sure it's running OK. Uh, view debug console. OK, it looks all right. Um, and then I want to see two clients. There we go. And I want to empty their cache and reload. And it's not letting me right click here for some reason. I'm not sure why. I've got disable cache opened in an inspect window in a different place, so that's all right. Go ahead and have a player play. Here's Don entering. Here's other Don entering. I'm going to invite, and then when I play, notice that the initial game board is going to be cleaned up. Boom. We start with, I don't like that flashing, that back and forth. Um, I'm not sure what I'm not sure how to fix that. Well, maybe we'll do, address that in the in the another video. I, that initial like flashing around, I don't like that. But what you can see is game over is gone. You can see I am black and it's white turn at the top, and you see I am white and then it's white's turn. And so we should enforce that it's white's turn. So I'm going to play over here, and I can play anywhere because I don't have valid moves yet, but I just have valid turn. So I'll click here, and white was allowed to play, and you can see it's black's turn got updated up here. And now if I try and play white again. I get an error that the wrong played the wrong color. It's not their turn. But if I come over here on black, I can play black, and now it's white's turn. If a black tries to play again, we get that it's not their turn. So that's exactly what I wanted to tackle. So we did our housekeeping. We updated our client with new status info. We updated our server with turn checking. Part one of enforcing the business logic is done. Thanks for your attention.